Chapter 23, The Roundelay of the Blessed With a gasp of astonishment, Carmenita now noticed that a white figure, throned not far from him on a lotus flower, suddenly seemed to grow upwards. The mantle, with its piled-up mass of folds and corners, unrolled itself until it flowed down in straight lines from her shoulders to the golden border. And even this no longer touched the petals of the flower, the figure swept away, untrammeled over the pond, up the bank, and disappeared between the trees and the shrubbery. How glorious that must be, thought Carmenita, but that is, I imagine, a very difficult accomplishment, although it looks as if it were nothing. I wonder whether I shall ever be able to learn it. You are able now. All you have to do is desire it, answered his neighbour in blue, to whom the last question was addressed. Instantly, Carmenita had the feeling that something was lifting his body upward. He was already floating away across the pond towards the bank, and soon he was in the midst of the greenery. Whithersoever his glance was directed, there his flight followed, as soon as the wish was formed, and as quickly or as slowly as he desired. He now saw other lotus pools, equally splendid as the one he had just left. He wandered on through charming groves, where birds of bright colours sprang from branch to branch, their melodious songs blending with the soft rustlings of the treetops. He floated over flower-strewn valleys where graceful antelopes trotted and played without fearing him in the least, and finally he let himself down on the gentle slope of a hill. Between the trunks of the trees and flowering shrubs he saw the corner of a lake where the water sparkled round large lotus blossoms, several of whose flower thrones bore blissful figures, while several others, even of the perfectly open ones, were empty. It was plainly a moment of communal festivity. As on a warm summer evening fireflies circle hither and thither under the trees, and round about the shrubbery in noiseless luminous movement, so here these radiant forms swayed singly and in pairs in large groups of chains through the groves and around the rocks. At the same time it was possible to see from their glances and gestures that they were conversing animatedly with one another, and one could easily divine the invisible threads of these exchanges which were being carried on between the noiseless passers-by. In a state of sweet and dreamy shyness, Carmenita enjoyed this charming spectacle until gradually there grew in him a desire to converse with these happy ones. Immediately he was surrounded by a whole company who greeted him kindly as the newly arrived, the just awakened one. Carmenita wondered much and inquired how it was that news of his coming had already been spread so far abroad all over Sukhavati. Oh, when a lotus opens itself, all the other lotus flowers in the lakes of paradise are moved and every being is conscious that another somewhere among us has awakened into bliss. But how could you know that I happen to be the newcomer? The figures floating around about him smiled charmingly. You are not yet fully awake. Look at us as though you are seeing dream figures and are afraid that we might suddenly disappear and that rude reality will once again surround you. Carmenita shook his head. I, I don't quite understand. What are dream figures? You forget, said the white-robed figure, that he has not yet been to the coral tree. No, I have not yet been there, but I have already heard of it. My neighbour on the lake mentioned it. The tree is said to be such a wondrous one. What is there about it? But they all smiled mysteriously, looking at one another and shaking their heads. I would so much like to go there at once. Will no one show me the way? You will find the way yourself when the time comes. Carmenita drew his hand over his forehead. There is yet another wonderful thing here of which he spoke. Yes, the heavenly Ganga. By it our lake is fed. Is that so with yours also? The white-robed figure pointed to the clear little river that wound round the foot of the hill, and so, by easy turnings, onward to the pool. That is our source. Countless such arteries intersect these fields, and that which you have seen is a similar one, even if somewhat larger. But the heavenly Ganga itself surrounds the whole of Sukhavati. Have you also seen it? The white-robed one shook her head. Is it not possible to go there, then? Oh, it's possible, they all answered, but none of us have been there. Besides, why should we go? It cannot be more beautiful anywhere than here. Several of the others, to be sure, have been there, but they've never flown there again. Why not? His white-robed visitor pointed towards the pond. Do you see the red figure, almost at the other bank? He was there once, though it's long, long ago. Shall we ask him whether he has flown again since then to the shores of the Ganga? 
Never again. At once came the answer from him of the red robe. And why not? Fly there yourself and bring back the answer. Shall we? Together with you I might do it. I should like to go, but not now. Forth from a neighbouring grove there floated a train of happy figures. They wound a chain about the meadow shrubbery, and while they extended the chain, the figure at the end, a light blue one, seized the hand of the white robe. She stretched out her other hand, inviting me to Carmenita. He thanked her smilingly, but gently shook his head. I, I would prefer to be a spectator still. Yes, better rest and awaken. For the present, farewell. And gently led away by the light blue, she floated thence in the airy roundelay. The others also, with kind and cheerful greetings, moved away so that he might have quietude in which to collect himself.